We've already discussed recording into the computer and what happens when you record too loud and the digital distortion you get that cannot be undone. We've also talked about working with clip gain so you could actually get everything to be somewhat uniform before you start working with it, meaning that when we get to the faders at the very end, we'll get the right visual feedback. So if we want the stream sound to be the quietest thing, we'll be able to look at the faders and see that it's the quietest thing. That's not something you have to do, but it can be helpful if you have like a bunch of different tracks and you're trying to find you know, things just based on what their volume levels are, or at least what they're supposed to be. Now in this final video, we're gonna be talking about kind of the wonders of the modern digital audio workstation and what happens when you're working at 32-bit floating point depth. So you don't need to understand any of the technical stuff, how this is happening or why it's happening. Really, you just need to understand the concept here because this is a really important concept and it can be somewhat confusing because I've talked so much about digital distortion and not wanting to see any reds, but the reality is in these modern systems, if you see red, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're clipping and or it means that you can fix that clip down the road without actually hearing any audible artifacts. All right, so let's just jump in here, look at a couple of examples and talk about a couple of different plugins that you can use to, con to control the gain staging. And now we're really getting into like technical gain staging, meaning we actually are putting plugins in here to control how loud or how soft a signal is being fed into additional processors. And then finally, what happens when it reaches the channel fader? And then finally, finally, what happens when it reaches the master fader? So this is like your two bus here on the right when everything gets summed all together it all has to go through some channel and in this program that's called the master channel and in your program it might be slightly different but it will be the same concept so let's do a couple of examples let's say i take this poem Farewell. which right now is totally Eat safe one pleasure filled fate to her we're not going to have any kind of digital clipping. You can see we have 5.4 dB of headroom but what happens if i go into the clip gain and i absolutely jack this up what do you expect to happen? Well, from looking at this, I'm pretty sure we're gonna get some digital distortion. And if I play this and I even jack the fader up more, we can go and look at our meters and see what happens. His griefs may return. Not a hope may remain of the few that have brightened his pathway of pain. So this is really interesting. The channel itself is telling me that we're going over that zero mark by 19.8 dB, and it's giving me a red number. And again, red always means dead. You need to kind of watch out. But when I look at the channel itself, it is not turning red, okay? The master is turning red, but the channel itself isn't. So what this really means is that we're technically clipping the master, but we're not clipping the channel. All right, that might be a little confusing, but watch what happens when I pull down on the fader of the master track. His griefs may return. Not a hope may remain of the few that have brightened his pathway of pain, but he ne'er will forget. The now watch what's happening with the actual meters themselves, okay? Here on this audio channel, we're seeing that this the dynamic range itself has greatly been reduced, meaning that the peak is going above what we can see in the RMS level or the average level, what's actually filled in in the rectangle is very much limited as compared to what we look to on the right, where it's moving all around. It's very dynamic. It's the original signal, basically. Pegging out, moving around. And this is really the crux of this entire thing about working in the computer and working at 32-bit floating depth. The processing is all happening in real time. And the computer is smart enough to calculate everything. All right, so it's not as if the fact that we're clipping on this channel here means that we have to necessarily be clipping the output because this is all happening in real time. If I just pull this down, it's able to calculate that and eliminate that digital distortion. However, if I were to go in here and basically re-record this track with how things are set up now, we're gonna have that same situation we had when we were recording into the computer when we got that digital distortion. So if I bounce this, which is the same thing as saying record it, I choose post fader, meaning that it's going to also take into account this additional 6 dB of gain that I've put in here. We can look and we can see that if I go to the master, no matter where I put it, we're gonna hear that digital distortion. Farewell, 
but whenever you welcome and even if I go in and I change this gain, right, this is the signal. I can't get the wavy lines back. But we'll go to a secondary example, which is if I pull the master way down, and again, I now work with this farewell poem, the one at the top, the one that is clipping, quote unquote, and I go in here and I decide to bounce from the master track, believe it or not, we're going to see the wavy lines come back in. We're not going to see any of that digital distortion, as you can see, like so. So it's very interesting. It can be very confusing. But what this really means is that you cannot clip audio channels or instrument channels. You will never see an audio channel with its fader or its meter going red. And you'll never see when we get into the actual processing and the signal flow here and all the tiny little meters going red. It just will not happen. Okay, but why does that really matter? Well, it matters because you can control the level at which you're bringing your signal into an additional processor. So let's just go ahead, delete some of these tracks, and hopefully I can explain this to you with a couple of good examples. All right, so we're back to our original poem. We're not getting any digital clipping, any digital distortion. It's just as it was at the beginning. Oh, well. And now I can go and I could start to process this sound from the audio channel level, all right? Meaning that I'm gonna be adding plugins here, top to bottom, or left to right. And it is important to keep an eye on what order you're putting things in and to understand, at least at this point, that this fader is the very last thing, which again means that if we go way over for some reason, it is possible to just pull this down and then bring the dynamics back in. At least in most cases, that is possible. In every case, it isn't, and I will talk about that. So the plugins you're allowed to use for controlling the gain staging in the effects level, okay, so this is after clip gain, are the built-in tool device or utility that you have inside of your application. This is the one instance where you're allowed to use something that's built into your program. And the reason is because this is really gonna illustrate this 32-bit floating point depth. You're never gonna have to worry with something that's built into your own program of potentially clipping that plugin. All right, because it's built within the same architecture. So I can go in here, for example, and I can jack the amplitude way up and then pull it back down here. And you'll notice that Farewell. by doing this, but whenever you welcome the hour that awakens, it's the equivalent of not having either of these in. They're just canceling each other out. So even though this is pushing way above zero on the channel, the fact that I'm able to compensate for it afterwards means that we're not going to actually have any of that digital clipping and you can actually watch and follow along here with these little mini meters at the bottom this first meter farewell is showing me what's going on from the clip gain stage all right the second meter is what's happening after this first tool device and then this little meter is saying what's happening after the second one so we can see that after farewell. the first one but whenever you welcome the hour we're peaking way, way out. We're limiting that dynamic range and then we're able to actually bring it back afterwards. And you're looking at this and going, when in God's name would you ever have a situation where you've taken a utility or a tool device and cranked up the volume all the way and then have compensated for it afterwards? But there is a situation and it has to do with dynamics processing. So as an example here, let's say that I take something, and you don't have to understand what this device is doing at all at this point, but let's say I take something like the compressor or even something like the dynamics. Let's say I take the dynamics here, I add in some ratio, I'm gonna bring the threshold down a little bit, and we can look at this meter and we can see how much compression is taking place. Farewell, but whenever you welcome the hour that awakens the night song of birth in your bower. And it's peaking like the all the way out here. Right, as you can see, it's going in here and it's putting in some very heavy compression. But let's say I put this on the other side, for example. Farewell, but whenever you welcome the hour that awakens the night song of birth. Hmm, totally different, right? completely different. And with some processors, specifically the ones that are like analog modeled, in certain cases, the harder you drive it into the actual compression circuitry or just the harder you're driving it through all of those different components, the more it actually changes the sound itself. 
So there are different like tonal harmonic distortion characteristics. You don't need to know that word, but I'm just throwing that out there. Certain saturation characteristics that change based on how hard it is that you're driving the signal into whatever processor that it's going into. All right, so hopefully that makes some sense to you guys. If it doesn't, you don't need to worry about it that much because what I would tell you at the very end of all of this, from looking at all of this and knowing that it is okay to kind of like push things over the top if you really want to, is that you should always work safe, right? You should always follow good habits because there are scenarios where you could bring in like a really old plugin or something and maybe it doesn't work at 32-bit floating point depth and it is possible to clip a plugin, all right, and actually get digital distortion from that end, still bring everything down, but you may not be able to eliminate that part, in which case you'd have to go back, follow along the signal flow chain and actually change things. And that can be important because these plugins may actually analyze your audio differently than your host application is doing. And if that's the case, you need to be very careful with the levels that you're sending into those plugins and into those processors. And that's why having these tool devices is so important for you. If you don't have a utility device, you are able to use uh, a plugin that does exactly the same thing, which is called the BC Gain 3. And with the BC Gain 3, you just have a basic gain control. So we could do the exact same thing that we set up before here. We'll take it, we'll duplicate it, we'll go into the second one here, and we'll pull it down by 60. Oh, wow. And here is a prime example of what I was just talking about. No matter what I do, I am going to have digital distortion because this plugin is not like the built-in plugin I have with my program. And a lot of people do not understand this point. This is really probably the most important thing, or I should say the kind of like most untaught thing within all of like working inside of the computer and working with different audio processors. And this is why I recommend using the built-in utility device you have. And you can just test this out, right? Because we're hearing the distortion now. And in this case, the only way I can eliminate that is by pulling back on this gain control here. Okay, that's the only way I'm gonna get rid of the digital distortion. Farewell, but whenever you welcome the hour that awakens the night song of birth in your bower, then think of the friend who once welcomed it too, and forgot his own griefs to be happy with you.